this week will be our first CSA drop. So um, our CSA is year-round. At the core of the very big idea that drives our table are people. Connecting us to all the steps necessary for food to appear on our table makes us smarter consumers. Involving us is a base strategy in the many defining that very big idea growing on this 58-acre farm near Sherwood, Oregon. This question of what is sustainable farming, I mean, like I, you know, like most other people thought, well, you know, we just do organic farming and that's the end of that. But then you realize that most organic farms rely on external inputs of one sort or another, whether it's, uh, you know, bringing in kelp from the ocean or some other kind of amendment from somewhere else, a compost from God alone knows where, or, uh, you know, so all the time there's this issue of you've got soil, you're growing something, you're exporting that something off the farm, which essentially ends up meaning that you're kind of taking something out and sending it away and then well how do you replenish that and close that loop is that you sort of import these other things. When you start looking at that and you realize well okay just being organic is not sufficient you're not closing all the loops and you really start focusing on closing loops becomes the key you know how do you kind of keep a closed system. Um, I realized that 10,000 years of agriculture and we hadn't really answered that question. The quest began with the purchase of the farm in September of 2011. Gene Wolfe, the broker who sold the farm to Narendra and Michelle Varma, is a witness to progress. I've seen a remarkable amount of change. They're, they've transformed this property. Uh, this is really quite impressive what he's done here. Steps along the path of reformation for the 58 acres include new workers. The nurturing of land and dedication to sustainability attracts a lot of people. I did a training program last year called Beginning Urban Farmer um, Apprenticeship Program and kind of got bit really big by the farming bug. Karen Flower's presence does not result from a casual choice. As an apprentice on the farm, her newly learned skills combine with her training and work as a family doctor. I wanted to actually learn what goes into growing healthy food. So in a way it's a big change, but in another way I think it's all the same, on the same continuum. An aggressive 2013 construction schedule produces new roads, an irrigation system, a packing shed, greenhouses, an office space. Before year's end, there will be a commercial kitchen and farm stand. In 2014, new housing will rise for more farmers to work the land. It was owned by folks who did a number of different things on the property over the years. Blueberries were most recently the, the biggest uh, piece of it. Josh Volk heads up the Community Supported Agriculture, or CSA, effort. Individual consumers sign up to receive weekly supplies of produce grown on the farm. Those getting a share every one of the 11 weeks of the spring season paid a total of $62. Sign-ups and prices for the other three seasons of the year are available at rtable.us. Josh brings 15 years experience to growing vegetables that are good for health for both people and the land. About three or four weeks worth of greens planted out so these are successions the first two beds were planted and then we waited a week and then the next beds were planted and then we waited a week and then the next beds were planted and we'll just keep walking that across the field. It's not just healthy vegetables that our table offers from these 58 acres. Free-range chickens, geese, and goats help nourish the land before they move to the table as healthy food. Among the most strategic of the farm's animals is a small herd of grass-fed cows. Rotating across this large grass field, what they eat returns to enrich the earth. A variety of future crops will benefit when planted. The vision of this land producing diverse products, vegetables to nuts to animals, requires social and legal structures to govern the whole effort. In an era marked by Madison Avenue's success in selling as single products, it is challenging. We all want to have the same gadgets and we all want to go see the same movies and read the same magazines. And, and that this kind of monoculture of the mind um, is a reflection of and is reflected in the way we manage our landscapes. Um, you know, whether that's 5,000 acres of a cornfield uh, or, you know, growing f uh, 20 different crops and that's all we eat. I mean, our diet has got reduced to about 20 crops, whereas our ancestors uh, used to routinely eat more than 200 different things. Returning to the drawing board, our table planners agreed on the power of one approach to counter Madison Avenue. 
human collaboration. We rethought the social legal structures and now have become a multi-stakeholder cooperative where all the people working on this farm are employees, are worker owners of this cooperative, are members, uh, get profit sharing just like they would if they had their own business, all of those kinds of benefits, but also get a living wage. Joining those farm workers in this collaborative are other farmers in the area who will aggregate their products under the R Table brand and consumers. Those buying and eating the food grown here will have elected representatives on the collaborative board. As we noted in the beginning, our table is a container for a very big idea. We are posting a longer version of our interview with Narendra for those interested in learning much more detail of that big idea. So how will we know whether this new agricultural model is a success? First, those working here must be able to make a living. Realizing resources to reinvest in the effort is part of success as well. There are much broader and more important measures. Um, at some level, the most important being, did we leave this ground in a healthier state than we found it? I think to me, at some level, that's the more important measure of success. You know, were we able to live off this land, steward this land, and improve upon it? Um, because I feel that that's a part of our mission and our charter as, as people today. Those walking the 58 acres on this day meet possibility. Over coming months and years, we'll all learn how much emerging reality fits the vision. We'll be here to record and share the adventure.